Great. And Thanks. If we're Thanks, Dr. Beale. Okay. And for the sake of time, we've already had about half the conversation of lumbar spinal stenosis. And so um, I'm going to try to make up a little bit of time. And this is just a little bit light overview. One of the nice things about courses like this is you get just organic discourse, questions, things like that. So you'll be covering a lot of this and we've already covered quite a bit. And happy Halloween to you all or happy Dia de los Muertos or whatever fall festivities you're um, giving up to be here with us. We really appreciate having you here and uh, hope you get a lot out of the course. Okay, so let's see, where do we got the clicker? Here we go. Okay, so 15 minutes, we'll try and do it in three. How's that sound, okay? Okay, lumbar spinal stenosis. And turn this on. Maybe not. Use the arrow keys defined by narrowing of the spinal canal, obviously. Um, oftentimes, lateral recess, neuroforamina will also have narrowing. Uh, but for the purposes of, of what we are talking about in our field, when we say lumbar spinal stenosis, we're generally meaning the central canal. And we distinguish neuroforaminal stenosis and lateral recess stenosis because they present differently clinically. And epidemiology, uh, as was mentioned earlier, it's a very common condition. Um, conservatively, 1.4% prevalence over 110 million individuals worldwide. It's definitely more common as we age over the age of 60. It's the leading cause, or excuse me, indication rather, of lumbar spine surgery over the age of 65. So relevant anatomy, um, kind of looking at, let's see, we've got a pointer. Uh, there we go. Okay, so anteriorly, we of course have the vertebral body, the disc, and uh, posterior longitudinal ligament. Laterally, the pedicles, the facet joints, and posteriorly, obviously, the lamina and the ligamentum flavum, as we were discussing with the mild procedure. And then outside of those areas, the spaces, neuroforamen, lateral recess, central canal, where the um, neural structures reside and can be compressed. Okay, so what goes wrong? Well, lots of things can go wrong. Most commonly, degenerative changes um, with the disc, disc bulging, herniations, such facet arthropathy and hypertrophy. Uh, basically, any of these things, we mentioned the dynamic changes with uh, listhesis, and um, there's other, obviously, more rare, obscure causes. Um, you know, congenital spinal stenosis a lot of times can ex be exacerbated by degenerative conditions, things like that. And um, bottom line, reduced cross-sectional area of the central canal causing compression of the neural structures, which can be um, exaggerated with the extension, inflection, and dynamic response. Okay? All right, clinical features. Shopping cart sign is the hallmark of uh, neurogenic claudication, right? Patients have to hunch over, they have to get a shopping cart as Frankenstein's demonstrating here. Generalized back pain, right? It's not often axial, sharp mechanical pain such as facet joint related, that sort of thing, myofascial pain. Um, it's more kind of vague, radiating out to the hips, buttocks area. And, um, can also present, even though the hallmark is neurogenic claudication, I've had a lot of patients come in, they have a single, looks like a unilateral radiculopathy, and you get imaging, work it up, and it's really just spinal stenosis manifesting as uh, specific dermatomes. Um, more advanced cases, obviously neurological impairment, gait disturbances, and more severe cases, cauda equina and um, bowel and bladder dysfunction. Differential diagnosis, need to rule out other, um, especially if they present with claudication, make sure we're watching out for peripheral vascular disease that can also have sensory motor uh, involvement, other neuropathies, musculoskeletal conditions that can cause pain radiating down into the lower extremities. And diagnostic evaluation, obviously history and physical exam. Physical exam may not be overly impressive, unless you have the time to have them stand or walk to, to reproduce uh, neurogenic claudication, they will very likely, if they have a lot of degenerative uh, concerns, they might have arthritis and symptomatic facet loading, um, tenderness, my chronic myofascial pain, things like that. So just kind of sorting that out. But as far as classic spinal stenosis may be difficult to fully discern on physical exam, uh, but more advanced cases, they might come in with that forward flexed gait uh, widened base of gait, um, things like that. 
As is mentioned, the gold standard for imaging is MRI, um, but what can also be quite useful are uh, flexion extension radiographs, uh, CT, CT myelogram, if there's contraindications for MRI and such. Okay, so management, as with many pain concerns, uh, and depending on severity of the case, uh, physical therapy, activity modification, pharmacotherapy with NSAIDs, neuropathic pain medicines, uh, advancing to interventions, as was mentioned, epidural steroid injections are a mainstay for symptom management. There's not great longitudinal evidence to support them as, um, you know, basically they're not curing the issue, right? They're putting, we're putting anti-inflammatory medicine in there that's gonna cool things down for months. So if patients do respond to that, it can be considered and have a, a stable plan of care. Um, comorbidities or patient characteristics. I think I, won't, I always come to these courses and take different things away. I think that's a great way to put it. And it's also easy for patients to understand, right? You tell somebody, oh, well, you have too many medical comorbidities. They may think you're thinking, talking about them dying or something. But patient characteristics uh, often dictate the plan of care. And so if they are not a candidate for surgical intervention and such, um, that might also uh, help you guide you for epidural steroid injections, more conservative strategies. And uh, moving on to definitive treatment, as we've discussed with the mild procedure and more traditional decompression and fusion, obviously more severe case, neurological impairment becomes more of an urgency or even emergency. And probably the scariest slide on here is hopefully none of you do your transferaminals with that approach. Okay, key points. Lumbar spinal stenosis is a very common degenerative condition in older adults. It's defined by cross-sectional narrowing of the spinal canal and subsequent nerve compression. It's a gradual progressive condition. Uh, cardinal symptom is neuro neurogenic claudication. MRI is the best diagnostic study, and it's managed conservatively um, and surgical decompression for refractory cases. Thank you. really fast. Any questions? Questions, comments?